three, two, one, and we're live. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of the Village Made Podcast. My name is Mavel Heimuli, and this is an exciting day, you know, exciting time for us and an exciting episode. Today we have the Olivals, and uh, I just wanted to say this on camera. You know, just growing up, you know, like we talked about a little earlier, you're a little bit older. And so... A little bit. Yeah. But just in saying that... Um, one of my first memories of, you know, growing up in Koku, you always wanted to be a Koku football Red Raider or, you know, play football and stuff. And so that was like, with your year, was one of the first people that I remember like, oh, I want to be that. You know what I mean? Like, and so I always remembered you and uh, it was uh, Fuluwaka being linebackers. And yeah. And so because of that, I wanted to be a linebacker <laughs> coming up. But, you know. The size difference was just too big. You know, size say, you, you were a big like boy. Yeah, exactly. You know, you were a but, big boy growing up when I remember. So. Yeah, but it's because of you and Sione. And then I also remember Star, Falevai. Those are like, yep. that was my first memories of Coco football and nice. wanting to be a, you know what I mean? And so I just, uh, yeah, um, another memory. <laughs> just, <laughs> just throwing this out there, another memory that I have um, is uh, because I, I was too big to play Pop Warner f uh, football and too heavy to play. I always played baseball. And during the baseball season, I remember coming down to the park one time and I saw you there. Oh, you were always, you know, practicing baseball. Right. And uh, mm -hmm. this was when I was like, like learning what a tongue in was, you know. And then, you know, the swap meet shirts? Yes. Like had the mana or like a Samoan or a yeah, tongue in shirt. So you had a, yeah. So you had a Samoan shirt on. And I remember coming down <laughs> to the park and I was asking you like, are you a trader? <laughs> Because you had that blue, it was like a, yeah, it one of those. blue on the yeah, I remember that you remember you're that? talking yeah. about, yes. <laughs> and it was at baseball practice, and I was on the other side of the fence walking to, because we had the small baseball diamond, yes. and you guys were on the big one, yeah. and I was like, I know exactly the same shirt. Tongan. He was in my ward. Yeah, Tongan. He has a Samoan shirt on. <laughs> and so, yeah, I, I don't know if you remember that, but I remember uh -huh. asking you, like, are you a traitor? <laughs> I don't remember you coming to me, but I remember that I know exactly the shirt you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, exactly. So, but, and so. And but, that's funny that you bring up his um, baseball because not a lot of people know that he played baseball. Yeah, and so. because of that, um, I forgot who I was playing with, but one of our coaches was just like, oh, you know this guy? And then I was like, oh, I know him. But he was just telling us that you were, you know, you could have gotten a professional in baseball. Really? Yeah. He, he was my head coach. The wrong sport. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, whether it was true or not, I remember that from my coach, but yeah. no. Nice. Yes. I remember that you were. You it know. was. And, yeah. and, you know, what, Koku, I mean, I love football, and football was always yeah. my passion. But yeah, we played baseball, and, then, you know, I think there were times, uh, when, when I did go that I wanted to quit, to be honest, just because Coke was so much football, but my dad, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. My dad kept me in baseball, yeah. um, and I didn't follow the norm because everybody else went and did other things, right. but nobody really went and played baseball, and, yeah. and the times I did, it, it was fun. I enjoyed it. Yeah. I enjoyed it. It was Absolutely. great. So. That's cool. Yeah, but uh, I, me too. I played baseball all the way my whole, <laughs> from when I was little until uh, high school. All the way to my senior year, yeah. so me too. I went different. I route. wanted our, our sons to play <laughs> <We> baseball, <tried. laughs> but then he saw their faces and he said, "We're forcing them," and yeah. they, they didn't play any longer. But they you know were that contrast there: football, you win; but baseball, we weren't winning. So <laughs> Not at you know, I had a balance <laughs> of both. So. <laughs> right, right. Hey, excuse me, sorry. So um, yeah, let's just get straight into this. Thanks again, man. I really appreciate you know, just because I knew that, uh, or just. Knowing just from my childhood memories, you know, looking up to you and stuff. Well, thank like, you. man, I appreciate that you guys came and even accepted to come, you know. <laughs> to be honest, like some of those things that they say, I've never even thought about it like that. I was in that situation at that time that little kids were looking up. I'll be honest, I was just thinking we were all the same, you know. Yeah. We were, we had farms to work and we all went there. So yeah. we all had the same parents who were strict and <laughs> carried out the same goals. And so to hear yeah. it, I mean, it's flattering, but, you know, I'm glad. I, you know, even if it helped out, right. I'm glad it did. So, yeah, I mean, I could attribute that to why I played baseball all the way through. <laughs> but yeah, well, first thing you know is always about your names, you know, and especially in our culture, and especially for our people, names are important. So, can you guys just talk about who named you, the meaning of your last names? Yes, but thank you for having us. Um, we're happy to be here. Kind of a first for us, and so bit nervous, but excited to be here. Um, my name is Tiare Clementine Tupua Olivao. Um, Tiare is a very popular name in Tahiti. Um, and so my mother, who is Tongan, 
um, obviously gave the opportunity to my Fahu, which is my dad's sister, to name me. Um, at that time, she didn't understand the culture, so she said to my dad, name her. And a name that he absolutely loved was Tiare. Clementine is my grandma, and so I'm named um, after the popular flower gardenia, Tiare, and my grandmother in Tapua's uh, my last name, my father's from Fa'a, Tahiti, and my mom is from Ha'ateho. So. Oh, no. so, Perfect. Yep. Yep. And so for me, I'm the second oldest of five children. And so the oldest got named by my, my father's side, as we understand the culture. And so being the second, it was given to my mom. And uh, my dad is from Folaha, and my mom is from Beitono. And so a lot of the, her, her mom is from uh, Koloa. And so from me, they named me after Kautai, um, one of her uncles, my mom's uncles. And so then he's one that didn't have any kids. He, um, they adopted um, a son, but they, they had decided to name me um, after him. So Kautai, and I, I, I didn't know, but his name is, is pretty known there in, in Koloa. So, and that's where I'm at with the name. I don't know if it has any significant <laughs> meaning, you know, my last name, Olevao, but... Um, that was well, the, your middle name. Oh, yes. Bronson. And so, so Kautai Bronson Olevao. So Kautai obviously is named after my, my mom's uncle, but Bronson. Everyone's always wondering, yeah. why Bronson? And so they're like, well, my mom had a favorite actor. And what, her favorite actor was Charles Bronson. Bronson. Oh, okay. Okay. And so they did. And so... Right, they took the Charles, I guess they didn't like the Charles, but they and they put in the Bronson there. So, and we love Bronson. So my son's name is. Bronson. I know that's what I was gonna say. Yep, oh, love so Bronson. So, but my parents are um, Danny and Lema Tapua. My mother is a Muti Lema Muti, nice. and your parents are our Falo Loma and Akanesi Olivao. Okay. And do you know, as far as you know, Olivao does it have a meaning or? Is you it know, from what I've name? heard, it was a more of a nickname. You know that had over time had taken um, a whole, you know, people will take the first names or the last name and make it their, or a nickname and make it their last name. And so um, that's kind of what I've, I've heard as far as, as the name goes, but, you know, I'm not too sure. I mean, there were rumors of it being that we should have been finals, okay. but, you know, again, nothing, yeah. nothing to confirm that or manus, at this yeah. point. So, yeah. That's cool. And then, um, so growing up, did you guys ever, because of your indigenous names or the names, you know, that are a little different, growing up, did you ever come to resent that name or <laughs> have you ever had a time or a period where, you know, it's like, oh, yes. can I be named Bronson Never. instead of Kaltai? Or, you know, like. Never. <laughs> I don't resent the name. Right. But I just think like, all Polynesians can, can, I agree. can experience this. When you're in a classroom and the teacher reads the role. The pause. Jared. Here, yep. Joe. Here, Joseph. Here, then a pause. Yep, the pause. And they look at it, and b before they can say anything, I go, "That's me. That, yep. That's me. <laughs> Kau Tai. That's how you say it." I think we can all resonate, or I think we can yep. all We've all been through that experience. That, so, um, and that's the only time. But other than that, I love my name. You know, I've been proud of my name, and, and try to make it, um, you know, as proud as it can be, um, as far as uh, representing my family. So, I like that. And did you have the same experience as well? Oh, I loved it. Those? Yeah, I loved the pause. As soon as it got to the pause, I kind of... Tiare! And then spend a minute teaching them how to say my name. <laughs> right. That's cool. And then from for both of your families, do you know their migration story to the U.S.? I know you said your parents are Tahiti, uh, Tahitian and yeah. uh, Tongan. Yep. And then yours is Tongan, so... Do you know your family's migration to the U.S.? I think it's a typical, beautiful migration story where my dad came to um, Church College of Hawaii, now known as BYU, same thing as my mother. Um, Lema came from Tonga. Um, and instead of traveling the mountains, um, they traveled overseas and met at Church College of Hawaii, got married, and um, brought their family here to Utah because of the church, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. But it was a beautiful... Um, them coming, there was a lot of sacrifices behind them right. in order for them to come. And so they were very fortunate to have families who um, sacrificed whatever means they had to send both my father and send both my, my mother to Church College of Hawaii for a better life in which they've created. So. Oh. And mine is, is similar to, to hers as far as my, you know, my dad, uh, he was a convert to the church. 
to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And so um, in doing so, he was able to attend Liahona. And then, you know, both of them, my mother and my father, uh, met at BYU Hawaii, likewise, and, and um, got married there and, and decided to, to begin and start their life there with, with five children <laughs> later. So, I mean, it's a, it's a similar typical story yeah. that, that you hear of, you know, parents meeting there at BYU Hawaii, so... Got it. Um, what are your favorite traditions growing up, you know, and uh, growing up in the village, you know, and then how has that changed over the years? I don't, I don't know. I mean, it, it, when you talk about favorite tradition, um, you know, the, only, the first thing that comes to mind is, is I'm a farmer you know, I'm a son of a farmer. Yeah. Um, I'm proud of that um, just because that, that's who my father. So those of you that, that those, many that know who I am and my family, the tradition was farm. Okay, that's that's it. Holidays, birthdays, birthdays, <laughs> Christmases, New Year's, everything Thanksgiving. was spent at the farm. And so uh, we grew up in in, in Kogu knowing that, and and my brothers knew that. That was something we always knew. We we hated it because um, we loved. Maybe that's the reason why we did sports. Uh, but when we knew there was holidays or breaks coming up, vacation, you know, from school or from sports. We already knew. My, my, my dad already knew what, what we were going to do. And so we spent a lot of time at the farm. And that was kind of our life. And, and that was just lessons learned um, from a humble family, poor humble family, that, um, that we had to do things a little bit more in order to support our family, to feed us, and, and things like that. And while I saw my friends going to the beach and doing barbecues and all that, you know, we, we spent it at the farm. So uh, there's a lot of, lot of memories of my brothers and I there at the farm. And I'm not going to say it was all easy. You know, it definitely taught us some things to, to do better, you know, for us to, to pursue a better life for us in the future with our families. And, and, and that's what we've done. So that, that's the tradition that I, I remember um, growing up. I love going back home. And now at this time, it's more for me to see family and friends and to catch up with them. You know, I didn't get around to go see any scenic places or, you know, visit all those things. It's just more to catch up with, with family and friends. And, and then after that, I'm good. You know, I'm ready right. to come back home to Utah and, um, and be with my family. But nothing much has changed since I've been back. I mean, other than people getting older, like you, Mario. I've known you as, <laughs> as a little kid. And when my wife first told me that we're doing a podcast, and I'm like, with who? Like, Mario. Maveo who? I'm like, Maveo Heimula. I'm like, the young kid that didn't say much, and now he talks. I'm like, yeah, all right. You know, and then to see you where you're at, yeah. I'm, I, you know, I'm happy for you. You know, I'm glad that you're doing what you're doing, and, and you seem to be doing a great job. And so, you know, Thank big you. ups to you and, and continue to do what you love. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And so that's me. That's our little town. Nope. I'm always proud of it. Uh, I wear it on my chest. You know, Koku's always... Always a part of me. I love um, just the, the camaraderie, the people, um, the many people who have helped me grow up to be the man of who I am today. So, you know, I can never give that up. And your dad is one of them. <laughs> your dad was uh, my young men's teacher. And so um, we talked about it earlier, and, and I love him for that. Those are one of the guys, when I go back home, that I make sure to let them know how appreciative I was um, for their patience and, and uh, being able to teach us um, as we were growing up, so. All right. We celebrated everything and anything from birthdays and from birthdays to anniversaries to every single holiday. In fact, when we were first married, he had a very hard time with that. Um, when we had Christmas and I wanted to spend only maybe $300 on gifts, he gave me a really hard time about that. He's like, no, you know, even birthdays, getting a few birthday gifts, he would get upset. He's like, please stop spoiling our kids. And I thought, it's only $200, <laughs> my goodness, how can you, you know, how can we be spoiling over $200? But he always reminded me, um, he always reminded me that, you know, for his birthday, they would go to the farm all day, and if they would get McDonald's, that was the birthday present. Mm -hmm. And so rather than spending $200 when the kids were younger, I would only spend $100. <laughs> so today, obviously, the budget gets bigger, but I always think of his situation and, and kind of tone it down because of, um, because of the experiences he's gone through. But when it comes to traditions, we celebrate everything and anything. Um, what I really did enjoy is growing up, 
um, for, you know, we, I think we all were poor and humble, mm -hmm. all of us, but I think a lot of us also never knew it yeah. because, um, when I would get a brand new lace dress, I was so excited. My girlfriend would buy hers from Nordstrom, but mine was sewn by my auntie Tolofi, you know, who lives across the street from Liberty Park. When everyone came with their newest outfits on the 24th of July, I came with fluorescent pink tank top and short shorts. It was made by an auntie, you know. Right. Um, so the gifts that we received may have not been dolls, but a blanket made by my aunt or um, just small little tokens of love and and it felt like everything to us. It wasn't until now we look back, my goodness, they made everything out of nothing, you know, so pretty yeah. neat. Yeah, and that just reminds me that, um, you know, the name of this podcast is called Village Made Podcast. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that's basically what it is, you know, like yeah. no matter uh, how successful we get, everything yeah. is all attributed to the village, right? Yes, yeah, it's yes. true. Just, uh, just like you said, you know, that, our parents or even our parent our friend our parents friends sorry mm -hmm. you know what i mean or just people in the ward that could be considered our village or yes. you know what i mean and so and we come from a very powerful village right i loved um i remember being married to Kaltai. my first couple of years being married to him i would go and visit hawaii and my father-in-law he was always really hard on me but that's because i'm his favorite <laughs> <laughs> but i remember him telling me you know i could easily go out and buy the nicest cleats Right. And then as I'm going out to buy the nicest cleats, I always remembered what he would tell me. And it's like, it's not the cleats that make the athlete. It's the athlete that makes the cleats. And so my husband would wear the same cleats for almost two years, even as his, his feet were getting bigger. Yeah. And so it just reminds you of those small stories to stay humble. Yeah. Right. To, to be humble. I'm not a humble person. <laughs> <laughs> and we all but have he those. makes me humble. <laughs> right. you know, like we talk about, we have, we've all experienced that. Yeah, yeah we've all been humbled. Um, and we come from poor families as well, like my wife said. But I think one thing um, that, that comes to, to mind for me is, is, is time, yeah? Love, love is time yep. in our community. And the amount of time you put and the amount of effort that you put into things. Not the material things that you buy, but the just sitting with it. And, and I'm reminded of my dad's funeral. Um, my dad exactly. had passed away. Your dad and the community, those that had just sat there to mourn and to support with our family, sat all night. Um, Sia Afiaki and, and her girls and many other families. And, that, Your class, um, class of 95. Yeah, my classmates. Even Manu's classmates all gathered. So Musia's many people, classmates. you know, oh, that. It was beautiful. That I've never seen it. you recognize, any. yeah. And that makes you proud yeah. of your, your town. But it, it's the time that, that many of the people put into to showing love for you. And, and that was our whole life, you know. Whenever we needed things, families out of the, you know, would always be there to support you. You know, whatever accomplishment that you had through there. And these were families that were humble as well, that didn't have much. But like I said, we didn't care about the material things that, that, that you bought or purchased, but the amount of time that you put into to being there just to let us know that you're there to support us. So that will right. always be, I will always remember. So, yeah, our villages are pretty powerful. Yeah. <laughs> and another thing that that brought up, um, you know, also in the village we have, you know, our village is full of different kinds of people, right? And so your dad is known as a farmer. <clears throat> There's somebody known as a fisherman, you know, yes. And, yes. or like the religious person, like a bishop, or yes. you know. And so because of these different attributes or, you know, people from the village, you know, we uh, scratch each other's back or, you know what I mean? Like, I remember your dad, you know, always giving us some uta, you know yeah, what I mean? Or it's ufi true. And, yeah. So whatever my dad could do with plumbing, you know what oh, I mean? He went out true. and helped you guys or, you know, whoever it's it was from the village. True. And so... Um, it's bringing all the strengths together right. to bless other people's lives. And to help, sometimes, to help each other. even yeah. if it's your last ufi, you'll still give it because right. you know that the next day someone will also bring something in return. It's beautiful. Yeah. And then now that you guys are parents and that you guys have kids, just the story that you told of, you know, uh, spending that last summer with your dad. Um, can you talk about, you know? Just some of the <laughs> the things oh, that you want to pass you don't on want to us your to kids. Cry, do you? <laughs> oh. maybe, maybe just the lessons, right? <clears throat> that you wanna that you've passed on, or that have passed on to you, which you passed on to your yeah. kids. Yeah, and so just building off on what I had just explained earlier, that love is your is time. Um, so leading up to my father's uh, death um, back in 2016, my wife and I had discussed, and she had the intuition as well to 
to to let me know. Yeah, you know us. We we grew up in a in a family tough love. You don't say I love you. We've never been told I love you. Um, the we reason, don't say it a lot, even to mom crazy? now. Even right? to this day, me and my brothers, yeah, yeah. Right? we we don't we don't say Not that. Not good. Say I love you. Yeah. <laughs> but the way that my father showed love was the amount of work uh, and sacrifice that he put hours. into after his own job to go to the farm and hours of of uh, working at the farm. And so, um, you know, my dad's health was declining. And, and that summer of 2016, my, my wife had asked and requested and suggested that I take the boys back uh, to Hawaii to go help grandpa uh, because we had just visited before and he didn't look, Maybe. he didn't look well. And so, um, so we had decided that we would spend the summer of 2016 and I would take them, my boys back to go help grandpa on the farm and I had sat them down and I had explained to them yeah because every time we'd go back to Hawaii it it's was vacation think of the beach it right? was all <laughs> fun you know they loved the <laughs> spam musubis from 7-Eleven they you know they loved the monopoles they loved the McDonald's spam eggs and rice that those are their favorite meals and so um, but I had to sit them down and let them know this is why we're going we're going to help grandpa and so um, there's going to be long hours you know on the farm and um, but again, this is to help grandpa throughout the summer. And they agreed. And we went. And I got to tell you, they, they, you know, at first they were excited about everything. But since we were there from like June to August almost, um, yeah, I, every facial expression they shown on their face, I knew. Yep. <laughs> I knew exactly what they were, you know, in the long hours of being in the sun, you know, taking off your shirt because you're all sweaty. You the got the mosquitoes. <laughs> you got the mosquitoes. You got the side eye look like, are we going to be done soon? You know, or is there another role we have right. to weed, you know, oofy or because we, we were weeding at that time and we had roles and I had explained to them, we'll have to go down this role. We'll have to come back. We'll have to go down and come back. Yeah. And they're like, really? You know, and so. They got a taste of what the farm life was like. They also got a taste of what grandpa was like because they were like, is there a lunch? And grandpa looked at the mango tree and he said, right there, <laughs> grab a mango from there and that that would your be lunch. your lunch. You know, to me as their father, I didn't say anything, but, you know, in the back of my mind, we'll go. We'll go grab something, you know, to eat later. But, you know, they got a taste of what, what farm life was like. Um, however, that was grateful. We were grateful that we had spent that time there. Um, and there were lessons, valuable lessons that my boys had learned while they were there um, in 2016. But after we had left, my father's uh, uh, health had declined in that October, and we had gone back. And then December, I had to go back, um, and then he, you know, had passed away on New Year's Eve of, of December. But um, that is that is something that I will always remember, an experience that I'll always remember. I don't miss the farm, to be honest. <laughs> I, the, I was ready to leave the farm and to, to, to get out of Hawaii, and I, which I did. You know, I went on a football scholarship, but, um, but I will always cherish those moments in which I had with my boys there um, on the farm. So. Right, right. I think what was most impactful to me, um, having sent Gautai and my, my, all five kids, I was here for the summer by myself. I went and joined them the last part of, of the trip. But what was most beautiful is that I can't imagine how – my father-in-law must have felt um, standing on his farm, looking at his son and his grandsons working on the farm. Um, although that, although he escaped it, and even the kids who live in Hawaii have somewhat escaped it, the lesson has been learned, and that is that a pencil is a lot is a lot lighter than a shovel. Ball. <laughs> yeah, and so um, because that lesson has been learned, all of our kids are very bright, bright kids. Um, along, I can say the same with also the nieces and nephews um, of the Olivao side of the family. That's amazing. Um, and, and just talking about, <clears throat> excuse me, talking about uh, this whole migration, right, of you being like first generation here in the States and, and then now that you guys have your kids. And then also for us too, because our last names are important, legacy is important, oh, right? Yeah. And so we stand on the shoulders of giants. Exactly. Of course. Mm -hmm. So for you guys, with your kids, what is the legacy that you want to leave for them? And also, like, what are some of the legacy that you want to continue or some of the stories, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. from the people before you guys. Yeah. Absolutely. I think um, there's when me and Gautai first got married, 
um, and we were learning how to parent our children, it got to a point where me and him had to have a lot of conversations and discussions of how we wanted to lead our family. And so we came up with three core values, you know, and I think every family does this, right. is that um, our core values are um, God, God family and education and anything outside of those things um should should not interfere with our with what we believe to be true so you know my husband used to drink a lot of kava before he met me <laughs> right before <laughs> sorry right? for bringing it up okay and i know you know his position now he's a high councilman he's the state young men's <laughs> president but in his younger years prior to meeting me um his wife he used to drink kava well if Gava took away from me as his wife and his children, am I right or am I speaking for you? You are absolutely correct. <laughs> then he pretty much gave it all up. He no longer, but it doesn't, I, okay, I want to be very clear. There are some families who live with their husbands or their spouses drinking Gava, and that is fine right. because that's their, that's their family way of living, and nothing is wrong with how they choose to um, live their values. In our situation, we had discussed this together, how I felt about that whole, you know, the whole Kava thing. And, and he respected and honored me enough to kind of put it aside until he has free time later, I guess. I don't mm -hmm. know. I don't know if you'll start it up again. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so those are the three most important things that I would like my children to, um, one, continue on. Um, and live within their own families and with my future grandchildren. Um, and then just to be remembered as um, possibly a person who gave hope to other people, who gives hope to other people, mm -hmm. or if they're ever in need of a helping hand, that I, I could do that. Um, I grew up with beautiful stories of how my uncle Paula Muti would literally find money so that a distant cousin could come here to America and gain education. How many of us do that today? And we have everything here in the United right. States. So if I can be that person, that Uncle Paul in my life, absolutely I would do it. So. Yeah, and I agree wholeheartedly with my wife. But one of the things that, because we have many discussions as a husband and wife, and and she's mentioned those core values of, of God and education and family. We've always stuck by that and, and putting those things first in our family. And, and that's what we want to leave behind um, our children. We've invested a lot of our time in, in our children, whatever they're doing. And I want them to know that um, just as my parents have shown their love, our parents have shown their love to us. We want to make sure that there was no doubt that their mom and their dad loved them, that we were invested in them, um, and that we did everything we could to um, to raise them to, to who they are. Now, not every family is perfect. I'm not going to say we're going to sit here and say we're perfect. We have our flaws just like everyone else. We have our disagreements, our fights. You know, our kids get, get pretty uh, wild when, when, when they disagree with something. And, um, but I want them to always remember that, that, that their mother and father had always put them first, that there was no doubt. And then just like she said, that we give others hope. Um, there's a lot of negativity going around already, you know, uh, people putting other people down. Mm -hmm. As we live in this current time, we can see the amount of hate that is going on. And so to stand there and just, just say, good job, you know, that, that things will get better. You know, those are um, comforting words for, for anyone to, to know that, you know, the sun will come up tomorrow and that we'll, there is a better life and that things will get better as we continue to move forward. So. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. And <clears throat> so with the sacrifices that your parents have made, you know, there's a lot of sacrifices behind the scenes. Moving from an island, you know, just trying to navigate this whole, learn a new language, <laughs> trying to come for education, yeah. you know, learn a whole new system. Employment. Right. And just that, you know, I, th I feel like they're cut from a different cloth. I yes. don't know if I could they be are. able to move from here to somewhere I'll where I don't speak, speak the language. Yeah. But just with the hope of like a new world, a better world, right, for your family and for, you know, your future generation. With the sacrifices of your parents and what they've, the sacrifices they've made, excuse me, um, and the person and the people that you've become today, would they, would you say that they, they would be happy with their sacrifice and who oh, you've become today? Yeah. I would hope All so. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope so. 
<laughs> no, I, 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 yes. It would be a disappointment on my right. end if my father stood there and say how disappointed I am. Now, my life is not done yet, you know. <laughs> we still have a lot of life to live. Up to this point, I guess. We still have a lot of life to live. We tell that to our younger kids because our younger kids are so critical of the older kids. It's like, uh uh-uh, uh, you have not been in ninth grade. Shh, I'm right. never going to date. Uh uh-uh, uh, I'm never going to sneak out. Uh uh-uh, uh, you have not been in ninth, tenth, eleventh, yes. or twelfth grade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I think for, for both my wife and I, we would hope they are. You know? And now, her, her, my wife has always taken the advantage of making her parents happy um, while they're living. And so I would hope that we don't wait. Yeah, don't. We don't wait until our parents pass away to finally say, I'm going to do what makes them happy. You know, while they are living, let, let, let's do Let's what? read their eulogy now, not when they're <laughs> right, dead. Right, celebrate them now, you know, right? Let's thank them now. And so it's funny because I had a birthday party for them and we had some of their friends. And some of the Polynesian people, the Tongan people we invited, they, it was very new to them. And they, might, they may have taken it as very boastful. Right. And it was, don't get me wrong, it is boastful to sit there and hear all the wonderful things. Thank you, Mom and Dad, for doing this. Thank you, Mom and Dad, for doing that. They're not used to that, right? Either. We are not used to <laughs> right. it. But I did not want to wait for them to be lying in their casket mm-hmm. to say thank you for all of these things. And so I tell my siblings, and my husband even is like, you know, that just feels so, it does feel awkward, right. but I don't care. Mm. I want my parents to hear yep. while they're breathing. And so I, I include my cousins. Thank you, cousins. <laughs> and I include um, their friends and family where they could just share beautiful stories that I did not even know of. So, yeah. And so she's made that point, and then, you know, that's something to, for me to follow. It's hard right. because that wasn't Because we don't family. know. We've, yes. yeah, we've, we've never, never done that. that yeah. And so I think it's out of our comfort zone, but it's yeah. something I think we need to do right. to, to do it more often, to express your gratitude now while they are living and not wait till after. Um, I think right. even it's, through one of these birthdays, I found out my, my Auntie Vaha, um, Auntie Vaha, she was taking care of all the people who have died in my family, in the Muthi family. Mm-hmm. So my grandma, my grandpa, my aunts, my every aunt and uncle, grandma, grandpa, who has passed away, has passed away in her home. Well, her and her husband had to quit their jobs to take care of the soon to be dead. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, during this, this time of their life, I found out that my dad, with the very little money they already had, um, had taken some of his paycheck just to give it to her and he was the only one wow. that would give a little pocket money to, to my auntie Vaha and no. right there when you feel that we were struggling ourselves and we have right. five kids and to know that some of our money went to help her who had to give up everything yep. to take care of our our loved ones was very beautiful so you find out stories when you allow people to share their exactly. stories so thank you <laughs> for Thank you for, for allowing yes. people to, you know, have this platform to share the unknown, beautiful stories that should be, that should be told often. So I want to ask, are we doing that for our siblings? You know, when they're in a hard spot, why do they have to ask us if we have a little extra, a little additional? Can we, in our own minds, take that $100 and say, hey, here you go, bro, you know? Yep. And I think do many we? of us do have that intuition. But we don't follow. Maybe we don't act on it. Right. And then I think maybe that's something for us to do better is to act on it. You know, you've received that prompting or what, you know, for a reason. Just I think do sometimes it. we just block it off as if, nah, that's, right. that, that'll take too much time or that's too burdensome for me. Or to, I might offend them. Yeah, to go out of my way. But, right. you know, obviously you felt that way for a reason. And so to act on it now would be, it would be the thing to do. So. Right. You never know what $100 can do. Hundred dollars. How far is a that lot. can take someone, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's a blessed dollar because it's a, a dollar of service. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Um, so just with uh, talking about our culture, you know, I feel like there's always that one person in our family that you know would give up, or you know, that was always like a caretaker. And that's yeah. a beautiful thing about our culture. You know, we take care of our own. Like just like you said, your auntie. You know, she oh, gave yeah. up everything to take care of you know the, the, your family members. And so I feel like my sister, my younger sister, is the one that would do that for our family, you know. And so we each have that in our in our um, in our families, you know. But also, kind of going off of what you were talking about, like not um, or learning how to express ourselves, you know, with your the the birthday of your your parents, you know, like learning how to like talk about them or express these feelings. There are a lot of beautiful things that come with our culture. 
but there are some things that we need to unlearn. So just for you guys, maybe what are some things as a culture we need to unlearn? I guess you kind of mentioned that, you know, but maybe... Unlearn is um, learn to stand alone. We are social gatherers. Yeah. And because we're social gatherers, you often see the one high school that has all the Polynesians, people will travel 20 miles just to go to this one school. So they so could be it's with okay. others like them, it's, right? It's, it's, <laughs> uh, yes, you know, it's, it's, it's good to be social gatherers, but there are times that, um, that you can stand alone. Uh, meaning, be different and go um, still love the people, still love the social gatherings that you're a part of. But um, if there is a school or a different school that is you know, right next to you, and they might be a losing team. Sorry, but go join the losing team and contribute where you can and how you can. Now, my husband thinks opposite because he's all about the, the win. <laughs> but social gathering, let's, you know, let's learn to stand alone in different, Amen, different places like, like you. Right. Who does podcasts? There may be a few now, but there was one person that had to break away and start something amazing. Doctors. You know, there was right. that one Polynesian doctor that broke away and says, I can do this. We can penetrate every, I think we could penetrate so many different um, career paths in our lives, exactly. in our, within our culture, but sometimes we just hold ourselves back. Yeah. yeah, and so for me, with our culture, you've asked, what is one thing that we can unlearn? And I would say... <laughs> gossiping or hating you know i mean <laughs> our culture i think i don't know i, I, I and we're guilty of it right i've been guilty of it I've, I've heard so many of my you know my own family members is you know what and it ties in with standing alone when people try to stand alone or do something man we have some of the worst well, the first ones to take them on things like, to say this, like you know? who do you think you are and then they start pulling up the past and I'm like, I would hate to identify myself by the mistakes that I've made in the past. Oh, yeah, that's, that's not true. who I am, right? We're all trying. No one's perfect, right? And so when, when, when someone's trying to step up in life and doing, love them, support them, be happy for them. Give exactly. them, yeah. Give them praises. You know, there, there's already, like I said They're earlier, already scared already. There's yeah. already yeah. enough there's negativity already fear. There's to already... go around. Just don't add fuel to that fire. Be that one that maybe if everyone is talking negative, that you would be. Hey, that you'd be the one person to say, them, keep going. Say, man, you know, that's a good idea. Right. You know, such as you doing this. I know I'm sure you had influences by others and that you're influencing others by na- um, right now right, um, right. who have continued yeah. to do what you're doing. So, you know, I'm happy for you, Mabel, and, and, and pushing forward. But I'm sure we can all do the same for others who are we're all just trying to make it in life. And if we can support them and love them in their endeavors or whatever goals that they have in life. Right. You know, there's Go no loss it. to anyone to <laughs> exactly. say, hey, good luck. You know, if there is anything that I can do to help, you know, or whatnot, then, then please. And, and my wife has, has, has done that. Um, she has been a great example for that, you know, from the business, t- Polynesian businesses, that exactly. she's gone out of her way to, to help, you know, purchase whatever they, they have online or whatnot, that, that she helps them. So... Let's just help one another get through. It's already tough as it is. Yeah. Let's try our best to help each other get through. Let's survive together. Yeah, right. And uh, just with what, uh, going off of what you're saying, standing alone, that kind of reminds me of my family with my sister right here. Yeah. <laughs> she uh, stood alone and went to Punahou. And so she graduated from Punahou, but oh, nice. I was more concerned with winning, so I went to Koku. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's just kidding. There are some things so, you're just you know, biased yeah. about, so. And you we, know what? She'll have, a, she'll have a story for you to tell you mm. how exactly. difficult it was, you know? It's, so, yeah, our I'm house sure. is Red Raiders. It was an easy choice as well for yeah. her with yeah. all her friends. And exactly. Things there in Koku, so. We face that with our own kids. <laughs> you know, we face that with our own kids. It, it, sometimes they don't understand you know, why are we at this school all by ourselves? And I said, it's not about what it's about is I want you to right. <laughs> focus on, on how you can contribute um, to whatever team you contribute on and educationally do your best. Absolutely do your best. Wherever, and their best is good enough. Yeah. Right. And I guess just on the flip side of that, um, we just talked about things that we need to unlearn, but I feel like we have a lot to offer the world. So what do we as Polynesians do you feel like we can offer the world? Oh, there's so much. We are so unique. 
we are so um, blessed. We we hold some of the greatest attributes um, that other that other cultures do not. I mean, if you go back to Tonga, Queen Salote has four um, pillars, right. and um, the four pillars are gratitude, humility, service, and do you guys I know? Think relationship. No. no. Um, Just kidding. <laughs> I memorize them, but I only focus on the ones that obviously okay. I'm really good at. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but when you when you bring that into any field, um, you hear of a lot of individuals. Sione Havili is one of them breaking into the technology world, you know, and he knew nothing of technology, right. but it was a job opportunity that came in front of him. And to hear how he is doing so well in that industry, you hear T-shirt designs, you see podcasts, anything we put our minds to. I think we can equate or do better than exactly. the lighter skin. The normal. <laughs> I'm not going to say balang. <laughs> But absolutely, we're capable. I mean, and I think um, all of us are very self-reliant. Any Polynesian can take something that they like or enjoy and turn it into money. That's what we are capable mm. of doing if we want to. Only if we want to. Yeah. And for me, one of the biggest things, you know, sports has always been a big part of my <laughs> life. Um, and it continues to be to this day. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, my experience at the University of Utah as a football player, one of the the impactful things that have that I've experienced there is that wherever you are, Polynesians tend to just love and accept anyone yeah. and everyone. Yeah, yeah. We um we regardless, we don't have like any you know we don't discriminate or anything, but we tend to bring unity within a group. And yeah. I am so grateful. Like I love football, but I'm also grateful for the for the teammates that I've had. I've loved the Polynesians in which I I've played with my teammates, everyone. Um, every single one of them that I played with. And so, um, but I can't uh, describe it in words, but the experience in itself of Polynesians is rallying up, rallying the troop. Rallying the troop and in whatever circumstance or situation it is, that we'd be the ones on the front line willing to go, yep. you know, willing to do whatever it is, you know, whether it is sports or church or, or work, whatever it may be. We are the first ones to say, oh, yeah, let's go. We'll do it. You know, we'll be, we'll be on the front line. So unity, bringing unity to, to, to anything um, the Polynesians will do. And we'll enjoy it and we'll love it and we'll have fun doing it. So, Right. Man, that's, uh, <laughs> that's amazing because I've I see, I, I seen that or experienced it as well, you know, when I was going to school in New Mexico. I, you know, just everybody wants to be around the Polynesians. And that's the unity that you're talking about, you know, yeah. that we bring in. So... Yeah, whenever there, there's barbecues, you yes. already know, you know. And yeah. then, just like you said, you know, like we're mixing it too, you know, everybody right. wants to come to the mixes, you know yeah. what I mean? And you, we talked about it earlier. We like people to feel welcome right. and feel loved. And that's just our nature. Exactly. You know, and if there is anyone that's not, we'll go out of our way to go pick them up and, yep. and, and see, you know, what's wrong? Is there anything that we can do? Whatever. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll cheer them up. And so we are the first to do that. And and that for that I'm proud of. So. Yeah. Yeah. That, and you know, I feel like that for me is what I'm also, you know, proud to be Polynesian or yeah. you know, Tongan, whatever it is, Polynesian, but that's a lot we have to offer the world and you know, with uh, everything going on in the world, I feel like yeah. that's one one thing that we can offer is just bringing this unity, you know what oh, I mean? Oh, yes. And, just like you said, we can not only be better not only can we do the same job, but we can be better oh, because yeah. we're the innate abilities within us. Absolutely. It always comes to mind, we'll have fun doing it. Exactly. We are a fun people. To, we love joking around, the sarcasm, I don't know, but yeah. we'll, we'll have fun doing the job. And, I think uh, it's in our nature to be hard workers. Yeah. You know, we come from, we come from hard workers, so... Yeah, and you can start seeing that in like football teams across, you know, as more Polynesians are recruited across oh. the country. We're starting to slowly yeah. move east coast, you know, because yeah. these teams are slowly start seeing like the what Polynesians can bring to yeah. a team, you know, bringing the team well, together. Well, one of the things that I, I see online is, you know, our one of our own, you know, from back home, Vili Fehoko and his son, Brady. Yeah. You know, and seeing him doing the haka at LSU. You know, oh, Louisiana that State. is so tough. You know, we, we grew so up with tough. the haka, right. but... You know, to take it to maybe somewhere that has not never common, how people and to feel, see how the the they people react around there react and respond. Them, you know, right. to bring that whole 
you know, not to say it wasn't there. You know, LSU is always is a powerhouse right. football team, but to see our own, you know, in Braden, and now to see him do it with at the San Chargers, Diego, yeah, with the Chargers, <laughs> you know, and and the unity that brings within themselves. Right. That's what we do. That's what we Polynesians do, and we continue to do that. And and I don't think, like my wife said, it's in our nature. Yeah. You know, we won't stop. We'll continue continue to have that effect on others. Right, so. right. Man, that's yeah. I can talk about that, you know, a lot. <laughs> I can talk about, you know, our, our village and then I can talk about, you know, what we as Polynesians it's have true. to offer. And so it's, true. it's just amazing. But um, I guess now we can continue, you know, or like uh, talk about what you, what you guys talk about, like the pillars in your family, which is education. Uh-huh. And you said you went to the University of Utah, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, just with the scholarship, sorry. And then you went on to get your master's. Yeah. And so, yeah. Can you talk about your that journey of education? And was it Ooh. easy to get your master's? And was there a big gap in between your bachelor's and your master's, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> but, yeah. So, you know, from the beginning, got a scholarship to, to the University of Utah. Um, thankful Coach McBride, you know, yeah. and Steve Kofusi and Kyle Whittingham. They were all um, took a part in that and, and getting me out of Hawaii there to come to the University of Utah. And it was always a promise from McBride to my father and to my parents that I would get my degree. And I remember him vividly saying that. Now, he said that not knowing, you know, to my parents. But <laughs> and I, although I heard it, you know, he made sure um, he had made sure that we Polynesian, because there were others from from Hawaii as well that it came up. Chris Mafala, Dani Utu and, and Tali Alave that came with me from from the University of Utah, uh, from Hawaii. And so he had made sure and promised that we would um, we would graduate with our degree. And so if he promised my dad, my parents that, you know, we have to, yep. we have to abide by that promise and make sure that we finish from the University of Utah. And so I did. I'm not going to say it was easy. You know, I'm not a, a great student. I'm not one of your smarter students, but, you know, I, I'm one that if there is a goal to achieve, then, you know, I'll do whatever is necessary to, to go ahead and, and achieve it. Now, after my bachelor's degree, you know, football didn't didn't go the way I wanted it to go, obviously, and and I had ended sooner than I wanted. There were a little, there was a little experience with with arena football that I that I had gone through, but you know, within within the business that we do, uh, mental health wise, there was a need for me to go back to school. I wasn't planning on doing my master's. There was no, you know, as a not a smart student there was like hey i'm done i got my bachelor's there's no more schooling but there was a need for it um within the agency and seeing the need for it the decision between my wife and i was for me to go back to school and do it and it came at the expense and it came at sacrifices that i needed to do because my kids were already born and they had sporting events going through and my wife i'm like do I go back? I don't want to miss any of my kids' uh, sporting events. But again, we had our discussion between my wife and I, and these are, this is the sacrifices that we had to make. In and everything we, included, we do, and yes. we included the kids. In everything we do, we include our kids in our decision, and we let them know. And so we had that talk with, my, with our kids that I would be going back to school. Which meant? For my master's degree, which meant that I would not be at some of their, their Games, sporting yeah. events or whatever, some, some of the things that they might have had at school. Mm-hmm. Or, or church activities, some things that I would have to sacrifice that, and they understood it. And so our family went through, through that for three, three years that I had to go back for my master's degree. And it was in license, uh, as a licensed mental health counselor. So mm-hmm. um, I'm glad I did it. You know, we, we went through it. We went through the sacrifices, and, and now we're seeing the blessings from it. We're reaping the rewards from, from such sacrifices. So. Right. Yeah. Um, we're, we've always preached that, and now my wife <laughs> is back. Uh, she's enrolled in school. That's what I and, see. And yeah. you know, for for her having to make that sacrifice back then, it's only fair on our end, and we're happy to do it to to take care of things while she's in school. Yep. So, so now I yeah, should talk be, about your journey, I guess. Yeah. So I'll be graduating um, this spring with my bachelor's degree in business management, and then I will be pursuing my um, license in clinical mental health. Um, soon after. So I think the next three or four years I'll be in school as well. Um, I am not a smart person. 
a smart girl. Never have been, and it's okay um, because people don't see your GPA on your degree. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But kids, do your best. Um, <laughs> but I was never a bright, bright girl, like that straight A type of girl. Um, and so it was very difficult for me to to want to go back to school, um, especially after we've established um, a financial rep, a financial stability and comfortability that really I'm thinking we run businesses and I'm just going to go relearn what I've already done. And that really is what it has been the last three years is I'm relearning things that I have already done. Now I just have put a name to it. Right. Um, and so, but when you ask yourself, why, why did I go back? It is to be that, um, that example to my children. Um, because we say education is important, so I've got to walk the steps, mm -hmm. right? Not just talk the talk. I've got to, I've got to walk the walk right now. So I'm back in school, taking one step in front of the other at a time, and I struggle. Yeah. But oh well. I think we all do. <laughs> and so we've got our, our yep. kids. Our two older ones are well. Our daughter was enrolled at Dixie State University before she went on her mission, and then our son earned a scholarship to the university, Utah State University. Nice. Um, and so he'll be attending there after after his mission as well. And then we've got three younger ones that are still in high school. So right, man. And just in reading about um, the business, I know your parents, right? They oh, started yeah. their business. Yeah. And they also got their degrees as well. Yes. To yeah. start their business. Yes. So, in them starting that business or with the degrees, that was it an easy choice to go back to school, or were you like, no, nah, not really, <laughs> <laughs> because you know we want to like. Because our parents got a degree, does that mean that you have to get a degree too? <laughs> uh, no. Well, no. That's kind of the expectation a little bit, but... Yeah. I, I mean, think it's a natural expectation, right, obviously. Natural. When your parents yeah. do, then you obviously yes. just tend to strive towards that that accomplishment. But I'm, we are very blessed. Um, I, what I can't believe, and honestly, what I really, truly cannot believe, is that my father, both my parents, who started our family business, um, when they started it, to say, here you go. Right. And they literally stepped out. Both my mother and father just said, here, Gautai and Tiare. He was 22. Mm -hmm. He was 22. I was 20 years old. We had an infant child. And they said, you know, it's time to mm -hmm. work. Yeah. And here you go. We knew nothing about the business. We knew nothing about the family business. So we learned um, day, just putting in the time. Yep. Day one, day two, day 10, day 20, day 100. Reps, right? day and there's the nothing rep. you can do to avoid going through each one of those days. So it's very important. You hear the, you hear the phrase, um, don't compare your chapter to their chapter of their life. You know, And it is because we're 20 years in, and then you've got a small little company that's just starting year one, and they, they literally defeat themselves because they're comparing themselves to a 20 year established company. But when I look at that first chapter of their small company's life, I know exactly where they're at because I've walked day one, day two, we yeah. have walked day one, day 20, day 50, you know, and all I can really, all we can really share with them is keep going. Right. When the troubles come, keep fighting through them, do whatever they ask you to do. You know, sometimes at the beginning of starting a business, you're wiping other people's butts. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sorry. Literally. But yeah. even if you're doing that, you have to also remember, you know, be humble because they squat over the same toilet you do. Everyone has to squat. So don't put people right. on pedestals that they really don't deserve. Why are you putting me on a pedestal? You know, just because I'm 20 years in business, but yet me and you will go to the bathroom and we mm -hmm. all squat the same way. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, just some motivation for those young companies out there. Keep going, keep striving, do what you have to do because there will come a day that all of this hard work will not be, you know, will not go ignored. Right. It'll be noticed. It's just a matter of time. And for me, you know, to describe that, there's a refining process yep. that has gone into it. Not to say that we started off well. And like when and she's we're not talking, like, we're yeah. not rich. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and just like as my wife is talking, you know, that she knows every concern. It's like my, my, my boys going back yeah. to the farm. Every expression <laughs> you already yeah. know, that's what we see in others that are just starting. And that's just part of the refining process to mm -hmm. build who you are as you continue to grow your business or whatever it is, whatever goals you may have. There's always going to be a, a kind of a, a process for you to go through, 
because not everything is going to be great and start off great. You know, right. um, you're going to go through that. And then, you know, at the end, I'm not saying it's all worth it, but at least you get to a point where, you know, you're happy with, with what you've achieved thus far. So there also I came mean, a time in our relationship where, you know, we used to work 12 hour days. And that yeah. means my children were with grandma and grandpa or auntie and uncle. You know, there or were those days. <laughs> and we're like, yeah, or by themselves. <laughs> you guys get on. Um, you guys yeah. get on. Yeah. Take care of themselves. Sign me Yes. Sign me <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yes. Um, Serial sign me those. Yeah, we had those hardworking days. But it came to a point where our kids were getting old enough. Is this really what we want to do is be absent for 12 hours a day? Or do we want to try and balance this family slash business life? And luckily we did. Was it easy? Absolutely not. But we also realized that, that we don't value money. Um, money is so cold. It'll never love you back the way you want it to. And so, you know, people say, people say um, you know, follow your passion, love your passions. And it's actually true because at least you're enjoying, right. you know, the what passion you that you have set yourself on. When you focus on what you enjoy doing, you've got to know that the money will start, will turn around and start to follow you. You know, but that's once you have created that love and that passion for what you do. Yep. Um, and so, you know, in our relationship, we're very clear about doing the things we love. So he says, why do you want to be a team mom if you don't love it? Whoa, 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 wait, <laughs> I love being team mom. <laughs> and so then that means zip it and do what you got to do because you're loving what you you're loving what you do but i think most of that is loving our kids we're, we're doing those things because part of the bigger picture is that our kids see it and so when we talk about those sacrifices and that efforts that that she's that she's doing there are some things that maybe i don't like doing but right. the bigger picture is because my kids right whether it's team mom you know you talk about team mom you're doing it because we have a daughter on the team as well and although it may be additional <laughs> burden to you on top of the many things you already have right. you know we carry many hats um you know the the love for your kids or the passion that you have yeah. you know carries you through through those things so so i think like for for the first generation parents you know like let's say you have a yate company right will those parents just let it go and see what the child you have to let the child know I am, I am entrusting you with my $50,000 company and let it go. Let your child, but you know, we're very controlling. I think, I think we're very controlling right. and we're very like, we want to keep it for ourselves. I am just so proud of my parents, um, just letting it go fully and allowing us to take our, our small business at the time, which is now a net worth of millions but it doesn't mean we're rich. Anyone who knows, who runs a business knows that you can have a net worth of five million and still only make yeah. <laughs> this much money, you know? But um, yeah, we don't, we just try not to value money more than we do. Um, the things that we love doing. Yeah, the things that we love doing, so. I like that. Um, a lot of people, or people say, I don't know, because I'm not in business, you know, but people say don't get into business with your family. Or oh, you know what I mean, with family members or family. So let me ask you this. Yeah. <laughs> Working with each other, do your skill sets or, you know, do the both of you complement each other or do you guys oh, take away or yes. not take away, but like, is there like a push, pull, give and pull, you know, give and take? Or do you guys push, pull, are grab, you guys both like punch, mashed together? <laughs> And so, yeah, can you guys talk about relationships, you know, working with each other and just... <laughs> My wife and I are very opposite. Yeah. She'll admit it, I admit it, we're very opposite. Yeah. And yes, you know, and I've thought of that, you know, of doing business, you know, with family. Yeah. But my, to be honest with you, my yeah. wife and I have always been, you know, with each other. We've right. always supported each other. She has always been my best friend. And that's why I don't get like... If you consider your spouse your best friend or the person that you cannot live without, why wouldn't you be able to make that, that make it work? work? Yeah. Right? Why wouldn't? And so for us, I'm, like I said, everything's not perfect, but there's no other person in this world that I, I, I couldn't trust with. Then, or, or maybe her. She'll, she'll have to speak for herself. But there's no better person for me in, doing, in going through whatever it is, um, business, whatever, church, whatever it is outside of our life than, than with my wife. 
she's been my she's been the, my best friend and so um we've spent a lot of time together you know there's a lot of benefits perks from from working with each other because you know we'll have lunch <laughs> you know we'll, we'll, we'll eat lunch you know we'll, we can do things you know um visit people whatever it is or we can take time off to go do um to visit or do things within within the community or within the church that that maybe we wouldn't normally do. And so for me, it's been a blessing. It's been a huge blessing that maybe the opposites have helped us that we're so right. opposite. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, because, you know, she's she's a go getter. She's a boom, 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 you know, make sure this is done kind of thing where sometimes I have to slow her down. Mm -hmm. You know, the word she's moving a little bit too fast for her own good um, that I have to look out for her health mm -hmm. um, mentally and physically. And yep. so we kind of balance each other in that aspect and so it's been a great blessing for us and 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 our kids see it as well so yeah we often get the question you know <laughs> how do you two work together but we people don't understand we love it yeah. however we do um i think what we're really good at is that we separate the roles that we play so for example when we're at home um that's the time that we that we become husband and wife or mother and father and when we're at the office it's it's a professional relationship but every now and then if I get off of a very stressful call then I'll go into his room close the door and cry <laughs> you know so I yeah. love I love working with my husband um, however we do work with his brother Sione yeah. we also work with my older sister Ota um, my mom does um, she does help us with the financing because that's a full-time job in itself but um, as a family um, business they will work hard with you anytime, you know, they, they'll do the additional After hours. hours right? Yeah. Anytime I can make one phone call and I have someone there yeah. to help me, you know, so we yes, they, it's true. People say, you know, people say you shouldn't get into, um, you know, business with family. But to me, it's just all about your perspective. You know, when they're the ones who are ride or die for you, why not bless their lives with the money that we're all working together at? Um, and the family business has blessed so, so many people from the families that we work with to, um, to, you know, my own individual family, Kautai's family. It's just been a great blessing, um, for us to help, to help serve. Nice. And then can we talk about the business? So what do you guys do or what does the business service or offer? Yeah. And then I guess you went to school for that, you know, <laughs> to be in that, but in talking about with service or with what you guys do, I know there's the other side, like Polynesians, you know, we as Polynesians want to talk about, which is mental health, right? Mm -hmm. That's something that yeah. we don't really talk about. Yeah. And so yeah. I feel like it's something that's important because now that, you know, we're learning to unlearn things yeah. and then unlearning things we need to heal from yes, some traumas, course, you course. know, that have yeah. happened and which continue generationally sometimes. Yeah. Yes. And yes. so, yeah, I, th I feel like that's, Oh, okay. What you guys, you know, have to to offer or talk about? Oh, you want me to? Okay. I'll talk um, about the mental health. Okay, no problem. So, um, I love what we do. I love the opportunity to um, to help a very vulnerable population um, within our state of Utah. And so, what we do is we are a foster care agency who finds um, temp families to care for foster youth temporarily. Um, temporarily in a foster home and while they're there provide mental health services to the child and the family to reunite them back together. Um, everyone will always say that Polynesian parents are foster parents and that they're just doing it for money. And you know what? Sometimes that may be true. I don't want to say that about my agency. Um, we are very, very foster care agency. I think we are very, very fortunate and very, very blessed to have a lot of Polynesian families. 99% of our families are Polynesian. Majority of them are Tongan. Um, I would love some Samoan families, so please, any families, it doesn't matter what culture you are. But because we don't do any public advertising, we usually get by word of mouth, yeah. friend of a friend, family of a family, and that's how I want it to be. Because I don't want just anyone coming into our agency and I'm entrusting them with my child. So we may call it a business, you know, a foster care business. We're not a business, we're a people company. 
it's all about the people we serve and the people that that come into our office so when you join our foster care agency you're joining my family so I may be the head but you better bet I'm gonna make sure that every <laughs> part of my neck is strong right <laughs> and so um, and so we do we have 70 plus foster care families um, we're one of the largest um, in the state of Utah um, you do get paid very well I mean it's not really a payment or an income it is considered to be a reimbursement um, and it is, it's a reimbursement, which means um, it is tax-free money and also that you can't file your taxes in behalf of these children because they're not a dependent in your home. You're being reimbursed right. to take care of the, the youth. So the youth that we care for are very difficult, very difficult. And I don't blame them. Um, the hardest part sometimes with the Polynesian people is putting aside your, your idea of respect um, putting aside your pride to care for one of our youth because the youth will disrespect you the youth will swear at you the youth will do things that you will that you will never allow your right. own children to do to you right but you have to put it aside because this child was not raised in the way that we were and so I have to remind my parents that when they are screaming at you at the top of their lungs and they break your TV and they put a hole in the wall and they break the lamp I need you to stand in a place of humility and allow that child to do that what Tiare you're gonna allow them to do that and you're gonna say yes why because you were never in their shoes. You weren't there during those times. So when they're acting crazy like that, I need you to be professional and not act crazy with them. <laughs> you need to stay calm, you need to breathe. And when they're done, I promise you, you know, they will look at you and they will thank you for allowing them to get that rage, that anger out, you know, of them. And what I need you to do is just grab them and say, hey, are you okay? I'm sorry you had a bad day, what can I do? you know, to help you. Why don't you go take a shower? Why don't you go to your room and relax? You know, that's the greatest love I think is, is happens within the foster care, within the foster care families that we have. So it's not if they hurt you, it's when they hurt you. Right. Yeah. It's, it's when they hurt you and when they hurt you, they don't mean to, you know, how would you feel if your 10 year old son or your 10 year old nephew was in foster care, right. you would hope that they, that they are treated well. So our golden rule is not do unto others as they would have done unto you. The golden rule at Pioneer is do unto others as they would do unto your loved ones. Why? Because you can hurt me, you can punch me, you can do everything to me and I won't care. But you do that to my child, yeah. you better bet I will do something. <laughs> and so, um, so what we do is very beautiful. And our families, they are wonderful. They are great. Um, I am picky. People know, know me to be picky, meaning um, I don't want just anyone. Yeah. You know, I've got to feel it here and know that if I place one of my children, my foster youth children in your home, I'm trusting you to absolutely do your best and not treat them like a t-shirt. Nope. They are not a t-shirt. You cannot just call me and say, hey, come and pick up this kid, which does happen a lot in foster care. It doesn't in our company. Um, we have a great reputation where a child can go through 30 homes and then come to my pioneer home and graduate successfully in that one home. It's, it's beautiful. It's neat. And so nice. our people are the best. I was just going to say that. Best mm -hmm. type of foster families. Right. <clears throat> And sorry, before you get into the mental health part, um, there was, so just like we talked about earlier, uh, yeah. so I have my two younger brothers, they were fostered into our home, and then eventually they turned into family, you know, exactly. even though they went through the system, but because they stayed with us, and then, yeah, they came when they were, I think, five and four, and then now they're here, <laughs> I don't know how old he is yeah. now, 20 something, you know, but I feel like just as a people, we're meant for this, just like you're talking about, you know, right. like just what we have to offer, or like just just us being us, you know. Yeah, it, it's a a perfect fit, or you know, it, it, it is a perfect fit. The beautiful it. part is, is that <clears throat> one day, Mavio, you and your whole family will be standing what in what I believe before God, right? And as you're standing before God, and He asks us the questions: Have you done any good in the world today? Have you clothed the naked? Have you, you know, have you cared for the sick? And yada yada yada, yeah, and 
the beautiful part is, or the be- most beautiful part that will be, will be those two brothers standing beside, standing right. behind you, and they will speak for you. They will have their hands <laughs> held so high, and they'll say, "He, they have done good for me. They have done good for me," and you won't have to say a word. So. To me, I'm just thinking to us, if we have to speak for ourselves, uh, did we really, <laughs> did we really do did we anything? Really, uh, <laughs> did we do anything? But no. So every time I make a successful match, yeah, a successful foster child with, an, with the family, that's an eternal relationship to me, right. right? So I want it good. I don't just place to place. Although if I saw these kids as money, we'd be dang rich. <laughs> <laughs> we would be richer. <laughs> um, but if I get that match right, you know, then I know that when I stand before God, these foster youth will be behind me saying she's done good for me. And that's what I kind of goal for. Nice. We goal for. Yeah. Yes. That's amazing. Wow. Cool. And so, you know, for my, my end, um, as far as the clinical goes, uh, she had mentioned something. And that saying is something that we live by, is that if you have to tell your own story, yeah. you haven't done enough. Yeah. So for us... You know, there have been many that we've talked to and that we've helped. Um, and I'm not expecting them to tell my story, but I'm not one or we're not one to just sit there and toot our own horn or say what we've done. You know? um, it's more important for us that, that we help others. And if they decide to tell our story, then great. Right? How meaningful it is when you hear it from other people. Exactly. About what Maveo is doing, rather than Maveo telling me, <laughs> right. this know, is what, what I do. This is what I'm doing. Right? It's, it, it, it takes... It's of more value, I think, more substance um, for me. And so from a clinical standpoint, Tade talked about it. Not everyone's resilient to trauma or to how events in their own personal life or family life um, have happened. Right. And so some of them deal with it okay, mm-hmm. and some of them can't deal with it. You know, the separation from families. Mm-hmm. Uh, you deal with major depressive disorders. You deal with anxiety disorders. You deal with conduct disorders. You deal with... Uh, sexual issues, whether it's the perpetrator himself, herself, or being a victim of of sexual abuse, substance abuse. And so we deal with a range, a variety of of disorders that the kids come in with, and and you you try to help each and every one. You're not going to reach every one of them. We do our best, and we have some great professionals within the agency that does so, that meet with everyone to provide individual and family therapy. And um, you know, if you've reached one or if you reach the, you know, a couple to help them, then great. But, uh, you know, we've had great success with the kids, as Tiara has talked about, in graduating and moving on. And the, many of them have come back just to say thank you. Wow. Just to say thank you. They'll come back with their wives and their kids and they'll want to take a picture with Tiara or with any of the staff that they were working with just for a simple thank you that we believed in them when no one else believed in them. Going back to, again, my gossip, that if we can just help people <laughs> rather right. than putting them down, we don't, this is the type of work that you don't see success overnight. Mm-hmm. This is something yeah. that is gradual. And it may not have an impact at that day, that week, that month, that year, but it's something that later on, 5, 10, 15 years from now, that they will remember, oh, Kautai said this, or Tiare said this, and it stuck with me the whole time. And they may not have acted it on it at that moment, but they will remember 15, they will act on it, and it will have helped them um, to provide I, help. So I also think sometimes culturally we um, expect thank yous. We expect for someone, mm-hmm. you know, I right. gave you this, and you have to say thank you or you have to do something back in return. Um, our acts of service or our acts of, of, yeah, just giving should never, you should never expect anything in return. You give, um, you just give give to give knowing that you won't get anything back if you do thank you you know so i love um my president kini kini he said um you give secretly and you're blessed openly and so you're always learning little like golden nuggets along your along your life and it's up to you to apply it and when you apply it amazing things happen that are kind of out of this world yeah right. like we always say oh you got my back you got my back well, i teach my children i don't care if they got your back you want god to have your back because the blessings that come from <laughs> heaven are much greater than any man can provide mm-hmm. you here on earth <laughs> and we've experienced that and we've, we've experienced that yes. oh my gosh we've experienced that all right and it's been a wonderful journey for for all of us and and it, it continues you know yeah. i'm not but at the same time we're, 
it's not all success. Yeah, they're they're broke. Well, were for me like, you know, I have to accept the kid, the child's decision. You didn't want, <coughs> excuse me, you didn't want to follow, and had chosen another path. Mm-hmm. And that's something that you know, I'll have to accept. I would have hoped that maybe something I said will have stuck with them. Maybe later on down the road, that maybe you would have like we they say planted a seed. Yep. That that might help them later on in life. So. And planting that seed is perfect with uh, the occupation of your father, right? Planting <laughs> <laughs> too many seeds, <laughs> right? Like you plant today, you're not gonna see today. Right. You're gonna see six right. months from later now, on down, right? and then that seed is gonna be able to eat. You <laughs> know, perfect. 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 So you're a planter perfect. in a different way, right? <laughs> <laughs> you're a plant of humans. Yes. <laughs> your yes, dad was yes, planting yes. in I his like that roots. Analogy. You know, that's a great analogy to and that. So some of those seeds is gonna go rotten, <laughs> just like you. Said, you know and some of them don't want to listen and some of them yeah. you know yeah. Yeah. at the end of the day um we just hopefully you know have changed their life in some way like you said whatever yeah. maybe that one thing you guys have said yeah. but um in being business or being in business what are some of the things that make it worth it for you guys you know some of those days or experiences or moments oh, or it'd be like easy. this was all worth it you know just time. Yeah. Just time. I mean, at first we didn't have much time because you're building, but today um, it's so nice to leave every day at, at about two or three o'clock, you know, or any time going on our lunch dates. It's it's the time with our family and friends. Right. And I guess just like you said, over those 20 years, that's what, you know, the time that you've built, right? Yeah. You've put in the time in the beginning we and have, then now. Yeah. Yeah. These times, yeah. you know, whatever. Yeah. Things can be more flexible or, you know, you guys can do whatever now. Um, and just in talking about uh, therapy or, you know, just with this whole trauma, you know, that oh. people are. What are some things like as Polynesians? I don't know, maybe like, why do we, why do you feel like maybe we're, we kind of like go well, maybe what is the word like shun from you know shy away from going to therapy or like mm-hmm. we don't talk about these kinds of things or do you ever think about like us as a people yeah. you know and a lot a yeah lot. and you know when that when you said that you know the one thing that comes to mind is we for us Polynesian people we're also a prideful people <laughs> yeah. right we're also prideful <clears throat> people that you do not bring any shame to your family. Mental health is looked down at as part of that, bringing shame to your family. And so we, we've all been it where, you know, your parents say, you know, yep. don't say anything, right? And that's always been, that's just the way of things, from my perspective and seeing our culture and the way we've grown up, is that you don't say anything. Do not say anything that's embarrassing. Do not say anything that's shameful to bring to our family. Yep. And that's just something that we as Polynesian people need to get over because we see the ramification, we see the consequences of people who do not deal or cope with yep. trauma, mm-hmm. right, the way they should be. Whether it is receiving professional assistance or professional help for it. Now, some people are resilient. Some people are resilient yeah, and of, can deal with the trauma. A lot are. And many are. But I fear that there are some that go hush-hush because of that. Mm -hmm. that very fact that we are prideful people and we do not embarrass our name and so you know what the answer is you know i'm not sure at this time because every family you know i'm not here to dictate to each family how they should live their life or what they should do but if we can have that open discussion with the with the parents and with the with the leaders you know our people are also obedient people too so with with the leaders talking more about it and, and allowing them to have a discussion um of what mental health is you know, there's a start. There's a start so that people can turn to. You know, we had an experience. We're progressing. We yeah. had an experience, a great testimony in one of our firesides of, of a youth who had, uh, who had wanted to commit suicide. Mm-hmm. Stand, stood on the ledge or on the building to jump. Beautiful girl. Beautiful. But had remembered the words of their church leader, yeah, their the young church women's leader. church leader. Had, she had remembered it and had... Stepped off stepped the ledge. Off the ledge. If we can provide that, you know, to to any of our kids, to just let them know there's hope. There is hope that that nothing's as worse as we perceive it to be at this right. at this point, but that we can move on in life. So, if we can do that within our Polynesian people, put aside your pride. Yeah, just I, put aside your pride and be I like present. What the future be holds. there. Yeah. 
be there with your children. Yeah. Um, I just think of a lot of, so I've, on the podcast, I've had people talk about mental health, you know, because okay. at some, you know, different points, I just was interested. And so, you know, just wanting to learn more or a little bit more about yeah. these kinds of things. And so, um, a lot of these, the generational traumas, right? Mm-hmm. Whether it's like domestic violence or, you know, sexual abuse mm-hmm. right. have been passed down because like you said, you know, yes, we don't want to shame the last name, you of know, course. like, oh, we don't want to be known as that family or right. you don't want to call out that family because of, yeah. you know, the name. Yeah. And so we hide these perpetrators, you know, these people right. who continue to abuse, you know, abuse, whether it's uh, sexually or domestic, you know. And so even verbally, uh, (laughs) but verbally is kind of, we actually had that conversation with my wife and that is the consequences of, of being hush hush is that we allow the perpetrator to, to continue on and harming, you know, wherever the next victim is. And so we don't want to be that we want to, we want to help hold people accountable for their actions because they're, those are severe consequences that continue on, right. like you said, generations, yeah. and not just at that moment. But sometimes to live your best quality of life, um, it will require medication and it will require um, therapy. Mm-hmm. And so um, if there are any youth or even young adults or adults who are facing these mental health issues, it is, first and foremost, it is okay. If you do not address it, then your quality of life is pretty poor. Mm-hmm. And no one wants to live a poor p- quality of life. And so if you help, um, if anyone ever comes to you and says, you know, just anything concerning to you, you need to take it serious. And really what it, what they're asking for is for someone to care. Mm-hmm. That's simply it. Yeah. For someone to say, I hear you. Validate. What can I, yeah, validate them. And what can I do to help you feel better? And if they can't go to their parent and say that, then I'm sorry, auntie, uncle, best friend, you are going to be that person to walk through those steps with them and do it because you don't know what kind of impact, um, impact it will leave on not only her, but her future husband or that future right. family. And generations you to are, come, right? You are doing something wonderfully. You are breaking chains. And to rattle chains and break it is very difficult. Yep. So you can't do it alone. There's no way you can do this alone. Mm -hmm. You have to have someone um, there alongside you. When you talk about sexual, um, when you talk about sexual abuse, okay, the person who has been abused cannot stay quiet, period. Mm -hmm. You cannot stay quiet. And I think the best feeling in the world for a victim um, would be to feel that, that, that next trusted person. So who would be the next trusted person? A parent, right? Mm -hmm. Family member. Yes. Whatever it may be. Whoever it may be. Yeah. The next trusted person, which would be either a spouse or which would either be a parent or whichever may be a sibling. Sibling, Okay. To know that, that, that person will keep you safe is the best feeling in the world. So if my child ever came to me and said, mom, dad, I was, you know, this happened to me. First and foremost, I probably would grab a gun and point it at the perpetrator. And, you know, that's the first thing I would do. I wouldn't kill the person, but I would want them to know, do not step foot in my home or any other place where we are at. In most cases. They just want to feel safe again. They were violated. When you are violated, you have to bring that safety back Mm -hmm. and if your own mother and father can't bring that back to you you're broken and you're broken for a very long time the trust issues right? it's broken until your mother and father or that next trusted person comes to you and says i believe you and i will protect you and i will make sure you're safe then they can move on they can move forward in majority of the cases, as we know, yeah. those who are abused are normally by people they do know. Yeah, people you yeah, know. It's not by strangers. Mm-hmm. And so um, we have to make sure that they're safe from the people we know. That maybe we don't expect or anticipate that that's, that's the behavior they're, they're doing. Um, and so we're always cautious, right? Just be cautious of things and don't, don't take things, you know, um, too lightly or minimize them to, to think that everything's okay. Let's, let's just be aware and 
of our kids' safety, you know, at all times. So. Right. Um, I just heard recently, or you know, just this, uh, just a thought, or um, a thought-provoking idea, I guess, okay. is about Polynesians. And so, I, because you, you know, went to school for this, what do you think about Polynesians? in a sense, not being meant for the traditional word of therapy, right? Or like going and seeing a therapist. Mm-hmm. Do you think there's something in our culture or like did we deal with it culturally in different ways back in the days? Oh, are you saying back in the islands? Yeah, back in the islands. Oh. <laughs> Whereas for, you know, like, I don't know, maybe nowadays because I feel like with therapy, people have this like, or at least for me, I know that if I was to go to therapy, I wouldn't open up at least two, three, four, five sessions, you know? That's normal. Whereas, Everyone yeah, is right? normal. Yeah. But maybe would, I don't know, maybe would there be a different alternative maybe in the back in the day? Or I don't know. Back that in was the just day. a um, thought that I... Are you th- talking about back in the islands? Or back yeah, back in, in the islands, Or amongst our culture in itself? Yeah, I think just... Because I don't, you know, be knowing how our culture is, I, you know, I'm not sure if there was anyone right. that they could turn to other than... You know, a friend, maybe, because from what I've I've seen and I've known, like, you know, parents were kind of busy, you know, they were busy with the day to day life that to add that on top of them, you would get the weird look like what, you know, and yeah. I don't I don't think there is an understanding of mental health right. um, yeah. just to start off. Like they just think, OK, you're Daimi Bave or, you know, you're kind of slow right. or whatever it is, you know, the names that they that they attach that with attach mental health with. And so, you know, education, you know, that is something that we learned when we right. came here. Um, that there with is a need for there therapy. Is therapy yeah. yeah, that there is a therapy yeah. and that there is some cognitive malfunction in the brain that that is needing some professional assistance, whether it is therapy or psycho medication, right? right? Psychotropic medication. So um you know, and, and that's something that I don't know if could have helped back then. Just to be, just yeah. knowing our people. Yeah. I don't know. But people also have to understand um, that when you do have mental health issues, um, and I'm not speaking from a clinical standpoint because I don't have my license yet, yeah. but I should. <laughs> just my as qualified. I should. Enough. Yeah. 20 years are good. <laughs> but in my experience and all the different cases that I've seen, <coughs> there are truly, truly um, mental health issues severe enough for you to not identify yourself. Like when you see people being homeless, believe it or not, they have a very loving and supportive family, but due to mental health, they are living on the streets. So it has nothing to do with the family name or the family reputation. Right. It's that you need to get them the appropriate care um, and help that they need to be a productive citizen in our communities. And so when you think of therapy and you think of psychotropic medication, to be a contributing citizen in our communities, you need to do, you know, those things. Right. And don't be ashamed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Seek the help that you need. Yeah. Um, just to improve your quality of life. Quality, right. And I feel like uh, with our parents moving here to the States, you know, they were first generation. That was the last thing on their mind, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> they were just worrying about right. putting food on the table. Yes. You know, that was exactly. what they had to do. But right. I feel like now, because we're the next generation here, yeah. we, you know, it's uh, it's on us now to unlearn yeah. these things. And it's on us, you know, it's a... Uh, and, I, you know, if you think you about know. it, I don't think my parents would pay for therapy either. <laughs> exactly. You know? I mean... They say therapy? Oh, they're, there's a hole. Like, I am not <laughs> wasting my... Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's kind of how they would look at it. But yeah. you don't have to pay for right. therapy. Which now, so, you know, through LDS services, you have... LDS what, services, your ser- school, you know, any child or youth you. or even adults can go somewhere and get a free referral for mental health services. Right. And it will... You'll be, you'll be helped. So... Um, if there are youth and young adults and even families who are in need of help, it's just a matter of asking um, any type of social position, yeah. which would be at church, can be at school, school. Um, and even your employment offers free therapy. So if you have an employer, just let them know that you're right. going through some struggles and therapy would help. But if you have your insurance information, just don't even go through your, your, you know, don't even let people at your job know. Just call the number on your little insurance card and they will, they will help right. you. But you've touched on it a little bit, Mario, is that, you know, you're not likely to open up the first two to five mm-hmm. sessions, right. you know. And, you're not going and to. And research has shown that to get favorable outcomes in therapy, Trust. 
that therapeutic relationship needs to be strong. You right. have to trust your therapist. So um, if it doesn't happen with the first one, don't give up. You know, I, I've said this to, to many others that have asked me, well, therapy didn't help my kid. Well, maybe your kid didn't trust the therapist. Right. Maybe there wasn't a strong enough relationship. I'm not saying all therapists are bad, right. but sometimes you tend to click with a certain therapist that you feel like, oh, I can open up to this one. Right. Yeah. I see that in some of the kids that some of them are reserved. They come in reserved, you know, understandable. They don't want to come and spill out something to exactly. a totally to a, to a stranger to spill out all my, you know, whatever's happening with me. There, you, there's going to be a trusting process that they're going to have to go through before they open up to you. Right. And, and therapists understand that. So. And in saying that, um, are there a lot of therapists, a Polynesian therapists, or yep. people like yeah, us? You know, there's a I feel lot. like because if I came to you, I feel more open, or you know, yes. because I'm more similar to you than I would be somebody, you know. Yes. And so I think maybe for just our Polynesian people, they just need to know that there are other therapists, maybe. Yep. Or maybe they don't want to come look at their. Sylvia Ale. Yeah. Um, you've got a lot. The Holo. The Joan Lani. The Holo. She's amazing. Nice. Yeah. Um, you have quite a few. Yeah. Okay. You have quite a so few. So at least Ricky people know that, that there are others anchors, that are like them. You know? Laki to Yaki. Laki. There's many. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. hopefully, you know, with in this podcast, I you think know. our Polynesian people, um, and I shouldn't say Polynesian people, just everyone, um, we do a good job at um, at protecting the family unit so much that um, you often see people or you often see youth. They will just be walking on the streets and all of a sudden they're arrested in jail for 10 years. And you ask yourself why? And it's because the family unit did not use interventions to prevent going walking on the street right. straight to jail, right? And so that's because the family did such a good job, you know, protecting, 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 that there was no steps where you could go a couple steps up and then steps <laughs> down back to the family. It right. goes from here to jail and you're like, why didn't you ask for help sooner? We can't do anything now, right. <laughs> you know? And it all started just from small little actions of, you know, getting right. themselves up there, yeah. so. Man. Well, I appreciate, I appreciate Hold you guys. Hold your kids accountable. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and especially in this day and age, yeah. you know. But um, yeah, I guess just where can people find you, or you know, on whether it's social media or just um, oh, yeah. your business, you so know. So www.pioneeryouth.com, okay. and my phone number has been the same. Our phone number has been the same for twenty five <laughs> oh, years. Eight zero one four seven four two five zero zero. Yep. Amazing. Yes. Well. Thank you guys, you know, I appreciate, you know. Thanks for having coming us. Coming here and Ooh, talking story. And especially just, to, you know, talking about, I, yeah. I feel like this is a lot of information that people need and need to hear about. And yeah. so, you know, I appreciate. But I guess just the last question just to end off with, um, just in talking to you guys, you know, there's a quiet confidence or there's a, you know, a strength that comes, you know, just from whether it's mana or, you know what I mean? Like people <laughs> talk about this, you know, yep, but yep. I feel like... You know, People also call it a power couple, you know what I mean? Aww, but I you. feel like, um, where do you guys find your confidence or your strength from? And how can you, or Easy. can you share that, I guess? <laughs> I, I love my wife. I, you know, she, we, we've always connected uh, since day one and we met. Um, we're always supportive of each other. And we've, we've always set goals. We've always set goals as a power couple. Even... At the point where maybe things may not be going um, the way that we want it, that we, we can trust each other and we'll have a discussion of what things that we can do better, what things we need to improve in as, as far as our marriage goes. And, and that's always an ongoing, that's always an ongoing discussion with ourselves because we can never take our, our relationship for granted. Just like we put, we invest our time into work, into church, into, I'm a coach, into football. That same amount of effort needs to be invested in my wife, in my spouse, um, to let her know that, that she comes first, that she's first and foremost. And so um, I would never want her to, to, to ever think that she doesn't, that she's not first in my life. And she's always made that the same with me. And so when we know that, we are pretty confident, we stand tall, we can move forward in anything and achieve anything that we feel like we can achieve in, in this life. With the help of our Heavenly Father. Yeah. Well... Um, just talking about football, um, I just didn't want, you know, 
everybody knows about it with this yes. BYU Utah thing, <laughs> the katush, you know what yep. I mean? But <laughs> you know, I just wanted to mention that. But with uh, yeah, uh, just you know, being a coach and you know, going uh, I know coaching at uh, Highland, right? Yes. Yep. So you know, we're not there good too good this year, but we love the sport and my my sons play there. So yep. right. it's been it's been a great journey. Um, like I said, I love the sport, but yeah. And my kids will often remind me exactly. of that. And the players will often remind. They have YouTube now. We didn't have YouTube back in our day. Yep. And they'll always remind me of, of my hit. And it's, while it's good to remember that, I'm like, man, that's so long ago. That's 1998, you know, and, and where right. you have it. You know, if it helps them, I yeah. guess, you know, that's something that <laughs> they like to pull up and watch and remind and, you. you know, of. just going back to what you talked about earlier about, you know, having other people tell them how great you were, you know, <laughs> like, oh, that must be a little, you know, <laughs> right? <in> the hat. <laughs> we all have, yes, people that tend yeah, to exactly. toot their own horn or like, ah, I don't know. Do you have any witnesses? Do right, you right. Yeah. And then you hear from other people are like, wow, I didn't uh, know I that about so. this person, right. you know, kind of thing. And so. uh, Or at least for me and my family, you know, with my uncle Lake, everybody yeah. talks oh, about yes. him. But I was yeah. like, is he really that guy? No, yeah. just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Until, he was. Because yeah. I when yeah. people, yeah. You know, when people you know, tell me about him, I'm like, oh, I don't know. I didn't see it. No, just kidding. And but. one of the... My best experiences of football yeah, at the University right. of Utah is playing against your other oh, uncle, Hema. Hema. Yeah. These are guys that I looked up to. Hema had babysitted me when, when we oh, were nice. younger kids. And so I have to tell you, as my, my freshman year playing against him, it was one of the, I don't know, like right. out of this world experience <laughs> that I'm, you know, against a guy that I looked up to. You yeah. know? And there were other guys too, like Itula Mili and Mark Atawaya and those guys from yeah. back home. Um, but I couldn't believe I was playing against him. And, you know, I remember had, having made a tackle on him and everybody wanted to cheer. I couldn't right. celebrate that. I had, you know, this but is... you had to perform the duty. This is the guy. Yeah, I made the tackle position. great, but not to celebrate it and, and to let him know that, you know, that I love him, that I'm grateful <laughs> for, for everything that, he, that he's done for us. All right. Cool. Well, just to end this... Uh, in this podcast, I just have some rapid fire questions just to get to know you guys a little bit more. So just the first thing that comes to mind, okay. we'll just go back and forth or, you know, <laughs> yeah, whoever answers forth, first, yep. you know. So uh, first thing comes to mind, just go for it. Uh, what takes up too much of your time? Sports. Kids. What do you Shopping. wish you knew more about? Know more about, more about construction. Oh, yes. Building. <laughs> nice. Who or what inspires you? Parents. My parents. What are some things you had to unlearn? Myself. Yes. <laughs> to be in a successful marriage, yeah. To be in a successful marriage, there's some things you got to unlearn. <laughs> Not to give up me. <laughs> What's your favorite book? Um, Drawing Upon the Powers of Heaven and the Art of Exceptional so Living by, so by John uh -huh. Rohn, yeah. Uh, what's special about the place you grew up? Oh, the Edith community. Avenue. The community. See, you have great memories. I do too. <laughs> Edith Avenue. Relatives. Oh, on so you the grew street. up in the Avenue. It's nice. Yep. Um, what have you only recently formed an opinion about? Oh. Oh, wow. Formed an opinion about? What have I recently formed an opinion about? You know, I didn't vote. Tr I did not <laughs> vote Trump. Um, the first, well, sorry, I did vote for him because I was like the lesser of two evils, right? right. And so I wasn't going to vote for Hillary Clinton. I ended up voting for Trump. But what he's done the last four years, I am very strong. This time, I am voting Trump confidently. Sorry if, if you lose any, <laughs> <laughs> any interview. No worries. Sorry. That's your opinion, yeah. right? Yeah. That's what you formed. Um, what song will guarantee to make you dance? Oh, any reggae, any reggae. Yeah, those church me. dances, yeah. right? <laughs> and the electric slide. Who right, doesn't right, stand up exactly. on the electric slide? Even if you don't know the electric slide. <laughs> uh, what's the luckiest thing that's happened to you? My wife. Mm, my husband. Yeah. <laughs> what are you guys most looking forward to in the next 10 years? Ooh, grandkids. grandkids. <laughs> oh. I've already started changing my house around to accommodate <laughs> the has. grandkids. We don't, not, none of our kids are married yet. Yeah. Are you feeling it's empty nesters good. already? Or you know, we're still getting to that right? We have three younger <laughs> ones, but I think we start because we lost two at all at one time. We right. lost two and then we got two new dogs. Ah, not like headed. What could you give a 40 minute presentation on with no preparation? Sports. Oh. Yeah. Or anything. the gospel. Yeah. 
test barrier testimony business right. profit yeah. i don't know uh what hobby would you get into if time and money weren't an issue construction what Building. hobby yeah hobby i would get into or golf <laughs> oh, maybe I'll learn how to play pickleball. <laughs> <laughs> That's the new thing, right? Yeah, pickleball. Uh, when people come to you for help, what do they usually need help with? Advice. Ad yeah, a lot of advice yeah, and advice. just sometimes money, but not really. Um, yeah, advice. Uh, what is something you think everyone should do at least once in their life? Once in their uh, lifetime? Uh, well, we travel, we... we Let's jump out of a plane. No, what we would suggest. Yeah, what would you say? What would that they you should tell do someone? Go to Tahiti. To oh, yeah. Take your Go family to Tahiti. To Tahiti. So yes. Get you some, yeah. Go to Tahiti. Get some Go pearls to Tahiti. or whatever. Yes. Yeah. Uh, um, which of your scars has the best story behind it? Uh, I have a scar. Yeah, you do. You have oh. this big one. But, but it's that's not. A, that's a typical athlete one. I, I don't have a I don't have a story, but my daughter has a story. She has like stitches on her butt, so that's a funny story. <laughs> I won't tell you which daughter, but. <laughs> and then what happened to your arm? This football. Just oh. I fell wrong. And that was his snip. first injury. This that was required arena. surgery. Arena football. So. Got it. And uh, what helps you live in the moment? Family. Yeah, family. definitely family. Cool. And last question: If you could get back to your village, how or what would you do? If oh. I could give back give or back. get back? Give back, yeah. Oh, there's so much to give back. I think words of appreciation yeah. is first and foremost. Gratitude. Yeah. And then if I have anything else, if we have anything else, I think we would, I would give, give all. much. Yeah. yeah. Anything. Absolutely. Time, love, If we're gratitude. not already doing it right now, please do. And I know that that our families... Just to return yeah. um, the gratitude that I've received from many individuals there and words from my powerful. community. Words are powerful, yeah. especially when they're kind words. And like you said, when they're alive too, yeah? If they're alive. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. And your father is one of them, as I said. So. Yeah, yes. cool, man. Well, again, thank you for you know, spending the time. Thank you for time. having yeah. us.